Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas with biztalkgurus.com. Today we're going to take a look at flow charts and rules in Workflow 4.0. First off, I'll start with a brief disclaimer. Everything you see in this video is based on pre-beta code from October 2008. Other code releases may not look exactly the same and functionality may be added or removed. And the general purpose of this video is to show new concepts and not necessarily the best way to accomplish something. Let's take a look at what we're going to see and do in this video. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the new flowchart style of workflow. And then we're going to look at rules in workflow. To accomplish this, we're first going to create a simple workflow in WCF. We're going to change our inputs. We're going to add a flowchart component, then we're going to add a rules component, and then we're going to test our work using a test client. Let's go ahead and dive right into the code. I have Visual Studio 10 open, and I've already created a blank solution called flowchart rules video. I'm going to go ahead and add a new project to this solution, and I'm going to add a WCF project and add the declarative sequential service library. I'm going to go ahead and call this flowchart rules live and go ahead and create this. Save my changes. Now, as you can see here, the designer has pre-built a get data section in our operation contract here. We're going to modify that in just a second. First off, since I want to be able to test this in Visual Studio, I'm going to go ahead and change the port that this is going to operate on. I'm going to go to properties on my project, go to web, and instead of using auto assigned port, I'm going to assign a specific port, and we're going to use 8080. Okay, now we're going to jump back in here to my get data section and let's take a look at the operations contract which is called get data. Let's go ahead and edit that and you can see here that I can define my input and output parameters for what I want this service to do. Now in the future this will be enhanced to make it easier to um, define these parameters but right now this is the um, interface that we've been given. I'm going to first off go ahead and change this to call process pets and I'm going to go ahead and change the value of my the name of my input parameter. I'm going to call it number cats and just to make it simple I'm going to make it a string and you can see the direction is an in direction. I'm going to go ahead and leave result the same but I want to have another input parameter so I'm going to click new and you can see here it adds space for another input. I'm going to make this has dogs. So this way you can tell me if you have dogs or not, along with the number of cats you have. I'm going to define this as a boolean, and this is also an in. I'm going to hit close and click OK. That's going to modify our input and outputs to this WCF service. Now you see down here, after receiving message, I'm going to go ahead and expand this up. And by default, we have an assign in here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And we want to show the new uh, flowchart capabilities. So I'm going to grab a flowchart and drop it in here. And you can see that this says collapsed on here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now I've drilled down into that flowchart. And if you take a look at the top here, you'll see the breadcrumbs on how I got from get data into the flowchart. At any time, I can click right up here and go back to where I was. We're going to go back into the flowchart. Now that we're in the flowchart, we're going to go ahead and see what we have available to us for our flowchart. We have a flow switch and a flow decision. In this case, we're going to use the flow switch going to go ahead and drag it over and when we select it we're going to hit F4 to get to its properties and here's where we define what expression we want this switch to evaluate. In our case we're going to have it evaluate the number of cats that an individual has. So 
So I put in that uh, variable there. And what we want it to do is, based on the number of cats, whether you have one cat or two cats, assign text to specific variables that we're going to return to the user. So let's go ahead and define our variables now. We do that down here on the bottom left. You see a little variables tab. I click on that and I'll see all the variables that I'm using in my workflow. Now variables have scope to the shape that you are on when you create that variable. So you can see these variables up top here, the has dogs and the number cats. Those were defined on the screen before this, so those are up on the top. Variables I want to define that have scope to this work, uh, this flowchart, I would define here when I click add variables, you'll see it underneath the other variables that have higher scope. So I'm going to define a cat result and have no default value. I want to also define a dog result. Dog result. And in this case, I'm going to give the dog result a default value. Um, and I have at least one dog. And I tab off that. Go ahead and close this window. Now we have our switch that we've defined to evaluate the number of cats. Now let's add some assigned shapes. The assigned shapes are what's going to actually evaluate the switch and then do something based on that. So I'll drag over two assigned shapes. Give me a little more room here. And you'll see as I select the shapes, you see four gray circles. These circles are used to connect the dots between the different shapes on your flowchart. So I'm going to drag my switch and connect it to one assigned shape. I'm going to select the line connecting the two, go to Properties, F4, and you see here the values for my case statement. This is going to be one, so when I have one cat, and I want to assign some text to cat results, and I have one cat. I'm going to do the same thing for the next branch. Connect it to the sign shape. And this time, I'm going to spell this wrong. And you'll see when I tab off it, that real-time validation is done against the available variables in the scope of this flowchart. So it tells me right away that something has not been declared. So I can come back here and correct that. And the red X should go away. And now I have two cats the text will put there. So now based on either a 1 or a 2, I'll have the results of the variable cat result set with some text. Now, I'm just going to... Uh, one more thing, I need to change the line that connects the switch statement to this assigned sh statement. Um, by default, there's one default that is created. I'm going to go ahead and I wanted to change this to 2, since this was... Um, the switch for someone having two cats. Now we're going to go ahead and add a rule set because after we assign text to the cat result we want to evaluate the dog rule to see if we have dogs. I'm going to move this a little to give me a little more room. Now I'm going to drag the assign of one cat to the rule set and drag the assign of two cats to the rule set. It could be a little tricky sometimes. Now like before, I'm going to double click and drill, drill down into my rule set. Make sure you notice the breadcrumbs at the top so right away I can jump back to get data or to my flowchart. And here I want to go ahead and drag a rule. And we'll go ahead and expand our rule. And to have this rule executed, we want it to run if has dogs is true. So I set that as my condition. Then we have then and else. So I'm going to drag and assign into the then statement. And while I'm here, drag and assign to the else. And here's where I want to assign the results uh, variable. So I have result. And in this case, when it's a positive case, I want to have the cat 
result plus dog result return to the user. In the case over here, where I know I don't have dogs, I'm just going to return the cat result. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to right click and build our solution and rebuild all was succeeded. Now that our rebuild was succeeded, I'm going to go ahead and launch this. Uh, without debugging, control F5. So it's going to go ahead and launch our, uh, run our workflow. And there we go. Now I'm going to open up a Visual Studios 10 command prompt. And they provide us a WCF test client. I'm going to go ahead and launch that, passing in the address of our service. It'll take this just a moment to load the parameters of our service. Now that our service is loaded, we'll see our process pets defined right here. And let's go ahead and give this a try. Since I define this as a string, I use the quotation marks. Let's define I have one cat and I have dogs. Let's go ahead and invoke it. See what this looks like should see our response message and here we see I have one cat and I have at least one dog let's go ahead and change this to false and two for example invoke it again and here we see I simply have two cats now so what have we what have we seen well we've seen how to use a simple flow chart in uh, Workflow 4.0. We've also seen how to use a simple rule. And most importantly, we've learned that variables have scope to the shapes that they're created in. That concludes this video. Don't forget to check out all the content available on biztalkgurus.com. Thanks a lot.